insects. They're how we all get to experience the thrill of murder. People don't usually get excited about bugs, but when you've got ones that only appear about as often as a friend's reunion, well, that's worth buzzing about. The latest buzz is that billions of cicadas are emerging in the eastern U.S. Brood 10 is coming out of the ground after 17 years. The cicadas have been underground, living on tree sap. And now, as the ground temperature hits 64 degrees, they're making their way to the treetops to mate. Their goal is to reach the tree branches where they will mate, lay eggs, and then die. Two weeks later, the eggs will hatch, the young will tumble to the ground, and the whole 17-year cycle will start all over again. So why do cicadas swarm? Scientists note their bizarre behavior is all part of their survival strategy. It's called predator satiation. They're going to emerge in such massive numbers synchronously, they'll fill the belly of every predator that wants to eat them, and there'll still be enough left over to perpetuate their species. Wow, 17 years. Man, think about how different the world was the last time these guys were up here in 2004. I mean, Tom Brady had just won the Super Bowl. We were getting ready to watch Vin Diesel in a brand new Fast and Furious movie. Ben Affleck was dating J-Lo. Whew, it's gonna be hard for them to adjust. But basically, cicadas hide for 17 years and then emerge all at once to try and have sex as fast as they can. And I feel like right now, everyone coming out of the pandemic is like, yeah, yeah, I get that. I get that for sure. And you know, as weird as this seems, it actually makes sense to me that they only do this once every 17 years. I mean, anytime I try to get more than three friends together, we always end up being like, all right, all right, you know what? Uh, what does summer 2038 look like for you guys? All right, great, we'll have brunch then. As interesting as it is though, this life cycle is completely insane. I mean, how did the cicadas even come up with this? Okay, guys, you know how most species hang out in the sun all day having fun? Well, how about we stay underground for 17 years sucking on roots? Then we jump out all at once and have sex once before we get eaten. I love it! Oh, my word's perfect! Don't change a thing! But let's move on from the cicada orgy to some alarming news about human reproduction. Because you see, it turns out that when Brood 10 returns in 17 years, we might not be around to see them. Could humans one day become an endangered species? Scientists say we are not only grappling with the coronavirus pandemic and a climate emergency, they say humanity is also facing a sperm count crisis. Analysis suggests that sperm counts in the West have dropped by over 50% in the last 40 years. And if the downward trend continues, it's feared that the planet could be facing what scientists are calling a spermageddon by the year 2045. Scientists say our modern life is behind this decline. Unhealthy lifestyles such as smoking and obesity and exposure to dangerous chemicals found in plastics, cosmetics, and pesticides. Wow, okay. This is some really bad news. Although the way they delivered it is probably not gonna hit right with some people. Dude, are you telling me that if I smoke, get really fat, and live an unhealthy lifestyle, then I can have sex without birth control? Yeah, dude, sign me up. But for real, guys, this is bad news. If we don't stop sperm levels from dropping, that means the end of pregnancies. And that means no more episodes of Teen Mom. I mean, I'm sure there'll be other effects too. I haven't thought it all through yet, but I'm Teen Mom, people. I mean, I know Spermageddon sounds like a spin-off to the Sharknado movies, but I think we have to start conserving our sperm. We can't just be wasting it anymore just because we saw someone hot in a shampoo commercial. Most importantly, we men have to start treating our bodies better because your sperm is only as healthy as you are. If you're spending all day smoking and eating badly, you can't be surprised when your sperm is also hella out of shape. Okay, guys, let's do it. Time to get to that egg. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, I'm cramping. I'm cramping. Oh, boy. This is further than I thought. I just... Wow, do, do we have to go to the egg now? We gotta do that right now? Because this is a lot... Oh, boy. Oh, I'm not... I don't think I'm gonna make... I just... Oh, man. You know what? 
I'm just going to call an Uber. I just think, I, yeah, I see what. Surge pricing. And finally, this is the time of year for spring cleaning. You know, it's when you take out all of your old t-shirts, decide not to throw any of them away, and then put them all back slightly folded. But if you find some stuff while going through your house that you really don't want anymore, please think carefully before giving it away. We all know that saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Well, sometimes it is just trash. This morning, Goodwill is urging people to reconsider what we're donating. It turns out Goodwill is getting a lot of stuff it can't use, like broken furniture and leaky batteries, and that's hurting the nonprofit more than helping. Garbage disposal costs are going through the roof. A spokesperson for Goodwill says, if you wouldn't give it to your judgy mother-in-law, then don't donate it. That's right. Some people out there are actually trying to give Goodwill trash, like broken furniture, leaky batteries, and Kanye's last album. And what I want to know is, who the hell is trying to donate leaking batteries? What asshole is out there going, well, I don't like getting burned by battery acid, but maybe poorer people will? I don't know what they're into. And you know that this has become a real problem for Goodwill? Because they never say negative stuff like this. They're literally called Goodwill. If they're mad, then there's a good reason. Like, if you saw Mr. Rogers going off on Daniel Tiger, well, you know that that little pup would try to pull some shit. So guys, please, make sure that the items you donate are useful. And when it's time to throw away batteries, be responsible. You take them and you put them in a drawer where they just stay forever, because no one really knows how to throw batteries away. I mean, it's like, you just keep them.